Um, right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this Writing for Television Awards Roadshow, um, brought to you by New Writing North. My name is Will Mackey. I'm a Senior Program Manager at New Writing North, where we manage the Northern Writers Awards, of which this award is a part. So tonight we're talking about our Channel 4 Writing for Television Awards. Um, just before we start, I was going to give you a little bit of context about the awards, but not too much because there's a lot of information and the best place to get it really is on the northernwritersawards.com website. But, you know, just to start, of, start us off, the Northern Writers Awards are open for submissions at the moment and they're open until the 18th of February and are completely free to enter. There are two strands to our Channel 4 Writing for Television Awards. Uh, one is a with Bonafide Films, and the other one is with Lime Pictures, the makers of Hollyoaks. Winners of the awards are given placements with those uh, respective TV production companies, and they're also awarded a, a bursary of £3,000. I'd like to say a big thank you to Channel 4 for funding this awards programme. Um, we're really grateful to them. And also to say thank you to Arts Council England and Northumbria University, who are the core supporters of the Northern Rights Awards as a whole. There are also a range of other partners and supporters that, that work with us and help us to make our awards program what it is. And we're really hugely grateful to all of them. They're all listed on our website um, and they include the Society of Authors who I'll special mention for tonight. So this evening, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the uh, Right for TV Awards as we go along. And we're also gonna be answering the questions that people have sent in to us, which I've tried to sort of structure into, into some kind of overriding themes throughout uh, throughout the session. We're joined tonight by um, a panel of four expert speakers from within the world of TV. Um, I'm just gonna say who they are and then I'm gonna ask each of them to, to introduce themselves briefly. So first we have Joe Patel who won the Channel 4 Writing for Television Awards with Lime Pictures in 2016. And Jay currently works as a scriptwriter on Hollyoaks. We also have Kate Dory, who is, uh, works in production and development uh, of TV drama. Uh, Kate has worked, worked really closely with New Right North over the last couple of years as the, uh, as the kind of lead person at Channel 4 for working with us on the awards. Also pleased to welcome Tyba Amla, who won the 2018 Channel 4 Right for Television Awards for Bonafide Films. Uh, Tyba sub subsequently had uh, TV writing commissions and been selected for uh, development opportunities like the BBC Writers' Room, Northern Voices, which she was um, just telling us about before we started. And we also are really pleased to welcome Theo Jones from the Society of Authors, uh, Theo, where Theo is the publishing contract advisor, and he has a, a special uh, expertise in script writing too. So welcome uh, to, to you four. Uh, I was gonna, gonna sort of maybe ask if you could just introduce yourselves a little bit more, um, and say just a little bit about your connection, if any, to the awards too. And I thought we'd start with Jay. Hi, everyone. Um, as Will said, I won the uh, Channel 4 Award in 2017, which is mm, three years ago now. Um, for the first year, I was mentored by Hollyoaks, um, which basically meant I went to their story conferences um, and sort of shadowed a particular writer and did practice scripts. Um, and it was all really, really interesting. It was hard um, because I'd never really done any, any writing pr uh, prior to that. I was a, actually a high school teacher. Um, so it was all very, very new to me. Um, but it was, it was a steep learning curve. Um, but uh, I made good progress on it, really, because a year is quite a, a long time. Um, in which you can sort of pick up the skills on how to write, how to work um, as part of a team. Uh, they offered me a commission at the end of the placement um, and then I just didn't leave. So I've kind of written, I've got to the point now where I'm going to sound like I'm being a bit cool, um, but I think I've written about 20, 20 odd episodes now um, and I regularly sort of get commissions and I'm doing other bits and bobs of work which I'll uh, tell you about later no doubt um but yeah so it's it's fabulous as all I'm saying so New Right and North um as ever has really sort of provided me with this like massive massive opportunity I can't like 
I can't give the sort of organization any more praise, to be honest, um, because what, they, what they've done for me is actually life changing. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. It's great to see you tonight. And it's amazing that it's now up to 20 episodes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so we'll just move on to, to Kate. Hi, I'm Kate Adori. Uh, so I was the drama development executive at Channel 4 for the last couple of years, um, which is sort of working across their original drama slate and also with sort of various supporting schemes for emerging writers, including New Writing North, um, both the kind of Bonafide and Hollyoaks arms of it, and which was really kind of the highlight of my job. So I was really lucky when I left Channel 4 to kind of sink my calls into New Writing North and not leave it uh, by mentoring um, Sam Neill, who's this year's Bonafide winner. Um, and so I'm doing that right now alongside working on a Glaswegian TV show, which just started filming this week, which is very exciting. Um, it's a detective drama, hence why I'm in an actual office, which is pretty much a novelty for this year. But where are you? Are you in Glasgow at the minute? I am in Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. So I skipped right over the north of England from London to Glasgow, but hopefully That's... I'll make it down. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, what, what, what's the, the series called? It's called Annika. It was announced on Monday. Um, it's a detective show about a police woman who owns a boat and solves marine crimes. Wow, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a strange thing to film in the middle of a pandemic with four hours of small Scottish daylight, but yeah, good to learn on. Yeah, it's pretty dark at the minute, isn't it? Um, yeah in a literal sense as well <laughs> as well as metaphoric yeah um oh, thanks kate uh tyba hi everyone um i'm tyba amler i won the uh northern writers award um uh with bona Friday films and i got a nine month placement with them where um i developed uh, a treatment uh over the nine months i was with them uh it was Different to the sample script that I submitted for the award, I, uh, when I met them uh, through the shortlisting process, I um, discussed different ideas and uh, they liked both ideas. So after I won the award, I was given, um, I was in the really fortunate position of being offered, um, asked if which one I wanted to work on. So uh, I went with the one that I thought was gonna be really difficult and it, and it was, but it was a fantastic opportunity. I worked with a script editor. In fact, I think at one point I worked with two script editors to work through um, the treatment and the story um, and characters and so on, which was fantastic. Um, so I did that and then um, that was back in 2018. I then went on to work, do some work with um, Film Hub North and um, cr uh, created a, um, to do some work on a short film. And uh, off the back of that, met uh, a meet and greet with some producers. And two producers liked the same idea. Uh, and one producer asked if I'd, I'd considered making it into a feature film, which I hadn't. So I said, uh, yeah, I'd definitely be interested in doing that. Um, so uh, we made an application to the BFI and it was commissioned for me to do the treatment, which is what I've been working on um, this year. Um, and then I actually went back to the other producer and had to say that oh, I've been offered a feature film. Um, and that producer that's known to New Writing or Sarah Dunn, uh, she asked me if I wanted to, if I'd considered doing, making a documentary based on that story. I said, no, I hadn't. So it was a fantastic opportunity. So I'll be hope hopefully developing that with her this year. Um, and I've been on the BBC Northern Voices programme this year, so uh, it's been a pretty full on year. Um, I had not really got any much writing experience before winning the award. It was really early days, so it was it was fantastic. It's been um, it's been great since winning the award. I've had so many opportunities, uh, and I've just um, completed my first Beck scripts, and a lot of people are uh, might have been writing before and not had a lot of experience. I've been working on it in the last year or so so quite early days and hopefully that will be going out to agents and production companies in the next couple of weeks um so yeah that's where uh, where i'm at but um it's been fantastic it, this has opened so many doors i i, I actually write part-time in the evenings at like a lot of writers because i have a day job as well so um I'm, I'm an employment advisor by day and then writer by night so like a lot of people 
yeah, try and juggle the two together, really. Thanks for that. I was just going to just, uh, you know, make the point that Taiba only won her award two and a half years ago. You've done so much. It's like when you talk through all of that's happened since, it's, it's it, you know, it could have been, you know, five or like 10 years. You've done yeah, so many things in that, in that two and a half years. It's incredible, really. Um, yeah. In the kind of very early stage as well. Um, yeah, thanks, it's been like a fast track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, and then Theo, who's joining us from the Society of Authors, who, as I said, are one of our partners. Yeah, hi, Will, and hi, everyone. Um, my CV is, I'm afraid, considerably less colourful than, than everyone else's, it would appear, and I'm probably considerably less talented. But um, I, my background is in publishing. I spent eight years working for a trade and academic publisher before moving to the Society of Authors. Um, I'm a contract advisor, so I advise our members on their contractual, all the paperwork they get sent through from their producing partners and publishers, although most of my work is in is for scriptwriters. Um, I also negotiate framework contracts, for example, with the BBC uh, for the commissioning of audio drama and also codes of practice with um, industry partners like trade associations, um, independent producers, etc. And finally, yeah, I sort of co-administer our scriptwriters groups. We have a committee of scriptwriters that kind of steer our work in terms of our campaigning and also uh, those framework contracts I was talking about. So, um, and I kind of work with them. I kind of, um, I, I deliver on all their kind of objectives and their imperatives that they hand down to us. So that's my role. Well, thanks, Theo. I mean, it's such valuable work that, that the society does, isn't it? And it helps out. I, I don't know how many writers actually per year. So, so many, um, yeah. and, and, and right across so many different uh, areas of work and genre and stages of career um, and in so many kind of multiple ways. Yeah, I mean, we, we have just over 11,000 members, but actually the huge majority of what we do is basically to improve things more generally for writers everywhere. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that's introduced uh, everybody uh, tonight. So. Like I say, we, we received all the questions from the audience and we've kind of structured those together. So we're going to go through those questions. I just want to say, if you have questions during the session, please post them into the chat. Um, my colleague Victoria is out there uh, at the moment in, in a, a virtual sense and she, she'll be around to, to answer some of the questions in the chat or she can refer some of them to us, which we'll try and answer towards the end of the session. And I was also going to mention that my, uh, another of my colleagues, uh, Laura, is out there on social media during this. So if you're engaging with Twitter, then, um, then, then maybe look out for New Writing North's Twitter feed during, during this, this kind of next hour or so. So we had quite a few questions which were about, what well, I suppose, which were about the um, aspects of, of writing itself, of writing for television, of what people are looking for. Um, and that kind of thing. So the first question I was going to ask is, uh, if you have any advice for people who are entirely new to writing for TV and are looking to prepare their first script. So does anyone want to ask that or should I put it to one of you? Does Tyber, do you want to start on it? I think you're muted. Oh, muted. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, you're gonna to have to repeat the question again. So the question was, if you have any advice for people entirely new to writing for TV and are looking to prepare their first script. Oh, uh, advice, prepare the first script. Um, the submission I actually made was one of the first things I'd, I'd written, like the first 10 pages that I'd, 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 I'd written, but I had had the idea for a while. Um, I would say that um, to keep trying, to draft and redraft that's that's the best advice I can give like to just get it down whatever your ideas are initially so I, t I tend to do like a um, scene by scene so I've got like a do like a short story first of what the story might be so beginning middle and end then I do like a, um, a scene by scene breakdown of what's like a timeline of what's going to happen um, so do that and then once I've done that um, getting ideas about things like dialogue or what I'm gonna what I'm gonna put in. I I try I use description quite 
sparsely really I don't I don't have lots of descri description in my scripts um uh, this the particular one that I, that I entered was was probably quite dialogue heavy or visuals you know to describe visuals if that makes sense so I would say definitely um if you can show it rather than writing it down that's really good as well a, a, a visually if you can describe something in in a look or rather than somebody saying something that's always good and uh, I'd say go with the the, the project or the, the one that you really love the one that you feel passionate about so th with this one I just put everything in there I mean um yeah I, and and just thought I'll just you know it has like hide it's got like emotionally it's, it's it was funny it was it made it made me annoyed some of this some of the scenes some of the characters and they really drove it i think in my story that the characters so if you can really get that get that down that's that's great but i would say go with the one that you it that you feel really strongly about really passionate about that's the that's the one that i, I went with um i would say definitely do that and don't be worried about you know if you've not got much experience remember I had hardly any this was I think the second thing I'd entered and was really fortunate to win it I really didn't think I had any chance at all because I had like no writing experience at all but that was one of the reasons I applied because no writing experience necessary I thought okay I don't you know I'll give it a go and see what happens yeah and we do really mean that you know that, that there's no need for any writing experience because what we're looking for isn't isn't to do with the technicalities of putting a script together really we're looking for the ability to tell stories and to we're looking for something in, in the voice I think Kate I guess yeah I think also sort of not getting to as long as the script is legible I think that's the, the kind of important thing it's it's like really looking for voice um rather than a sort of correctly formatted script. I can see someone in the chat saying um, about software and like Final Draft is the kind of one people use on a production, but it's very expensive and not something anyone would expect you to have. And there's pl plenty of kind of fl free programs out there. I'm pretty sure there's a template in Word to, um, to sort of put that together. But also I think the best, advice to give anyone kind of coming to TV for the first time is just to read lots of scripts and you learn so much by osmosis of that I think BBC Writers Room is such a good resource for that it has a massive script library um, and being able to watch something and then sort of read it and see how all of that works and see how it translates from kind of page to screen is really really useful yeah yeah great and, and and the other thing um people had asked about whether they need the sort of technicalities of the script in in like an early draft of a script you know things to do with um with scenery and the props and things like that in there um and i i does anyone think that that they do need that no i think um i think one of the things um we're sometimes tempted to do is we're writing from the perspective of a director rather than the perspective of a writer. So when you're watching a film and you see like a leaf and it's raining and you know the rain comes down on a leaf and the drop of rain falls onto the floor and all that kind of stuff and that's symbolism for how we feel the weight of the world on us or whatever, um, don't do that. <laughs> do that in a novel, but don't do that in your script. Um, because really, in essence, what we're looking for more than anything else is dialogue and your ability to write dialogue and to show character. Um, so story and dialogue are the, are the two main things. Um, but the sort of visuals, you don't include them unless they're actually important to the story. And I think I would said before um, when I was doing another panel uh, with Will a while ago, even though in reality, if somebody is sitting talking, they may have a sip of tea. You wouldn't put that in your script unless somebody had poisoned the tea already. So you don't put it in just because it's natural and that's what people do. You'd only put it in if there's poison or the person was pausing deliberately because they were lying and all of that kind of stuff. So anything you write, it's thinking about, is this relevant for what it, for my story is this relevant for character otherwise don't don't put it in even if it's beautiful 
yeah it's not too many instructions yeah ab absolutely absolutely yeah and Theo, I was going to ask you, one person had asked about coming from another area yeah. into TV script writing. So, for example, someone coming from theatre and how you should approach that, making that transition to writing for TV, if they should be kind of cautious or bold or... I think it's really, really exciting. We're seeing increasingly num increasingly numbers of um, novelists, etc., cetera, um, people that have been become established in other disciplines or at least not even become established, just you know, um, educated themselves in other disciplines are actually increasingly looking towards sort of the script writing as, as something to try. Um, yeah, I mean, they need to recognise that there are different skills involved and it's very different, as you say, um, you know, writing a novel is very, very different to writing a script and, you know, uh, scripts in that cup of tea in, you know, it's all about the dramatic, dramatic imperative. Um, what we don't offer at the SOA is sort of practical workshops in terms of how you actually craft your scripts and how you craft your Bible or treatment. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of appetite for it. Yeah. And Kate, I was just going to follow up with you. Would you look to just dramatists in other areas? Yeah, to definitely. I think lots and lots of TV writers come from theatre. Not always, but um, a lot of people kind of build up a kind of career in theatre before moving to TV and when theatre was was happening um, it's definitely kind of like a sort of thing you know producers go to theatre to find stories and to find writers um I think it's it's weird because I think the skills are really really different um there's a lot of stuff if you're moving from theatre that you have to kind of learn and negotiate with for screenwriting so just things like perspective like you're not seeing it sort of from the perspective of the theatre audience you're usually kind of with a character and seeing what they're seeing and that actually changes how you tell a story um, quite significantly and also I think TV I mean TV is like pretty much like it, it tends to be more commercial than theatre so that changes things but also I think it's about like there's a lot more sort of plot and kind of propulsion, like Theo was saying, a kind of narrative which really defines writing for television. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, working in theatre and then moving to TV is like a really common thing for screenwriters. Yeah, they're great. And, and the theatre will, you know, it will come back. Um, it will. <laughs> much love for it. So we had quite a few questions that, that were to do with uh, how you find support, I suppose, with your writing. And I started to think about the different types of support that there, that, that, that can be, which might be, you know, um, networks, or it could also be courses or um, developmental programs, things like that. So Tybra, I was wondering if you wanted to start with any thoughts on, you know, resources that, that you know about or ideas of development programs or, or support networks, things like that, that you, you would, you've experienced or you would recommend? Yeah, um, so <clears throat> when I first looked into uh, screenwriting, I mean, uh, it was literally probably, I think a couple of years before winning the award, um, I, I didn't really know where to, where to start. I just Google screenwriting and uh, just, um, I think my first protocol was BBC Writers Room, which has a wealth of information. There's some fantastic, as Kate's mentioned, there's some great, they've got a great script library, but they've also got lots of, um, they do a blog and there's lots of opportunities on there. And that's been really, really, that was really, really useful. Uh, I came across um, the London Screenwriters Festival and they had a, a, a competition where they, <clears throat> and they sometimes do quite regular ones where you can, um, you um, submit either an idea for a script and then uh, other writers give you feedback so you go through different drafts and you feedback on others and they feedback on yours and that was a great opportunity to kind of learn that's where, where I, I really learned a little bit more about how to you know tell a story and things like editing and, and the technical side of it I, I had to learn as I went along I think the first thing that I did was like a two-page script and I literally did it on a word document because I didn't know how how it worked and used the BBC Writers Room scripts to kind of get an idea okay this goes here and this goes there and just learn as, as, as I went along um, and um, through New Writing North just meeting other uh, other writers as well um, entering competitions and then um, 
working with you know if you if, if you're in a group just using groups but also um seeing what's out there on social media there are lots and lots of different things if you if you if you use facebook or, or twitter um people will often post different things and there's different networks depending on what area you live in so um i mean i live in west yorkshire and there's fantastic stuff in leeds and bradford and so on and, and halifax as well as well going on that people um you know join um writers groups if there isn't a writers group set one up because it's a really good way to get to know people in your area um that's that i found really really useful um but yeah i i'd say um that and there's different books i've i've um had a look through and uh, looked at um john york's into the story is a brilliant book i definitely recommend that um and there are a few different other ones i've my mind's gone blank, but um, it, it's it's worth having a look and reading reviews and asking people. So yeah, I would say you can usually find lots of things on, on social media to be fair. Thank you. We actually had a, a specific question from somebody in Yorkshire who, um, who, who was uh, asking about what sort of opportunities there are for writers in specifically in Yorkshire. So thanks for that. Okay. Uh, um, and does anyone else want to pick up on any kind of support networks? Things like, you know, peer support. Uh, I know the SOA do, do things don't they Theo? Yeah so uh, I and mean, we do a lot of events for members and non-members and I think at the start you mentioned sorry maybe when we were talking previous to this opening we were talking about the SOA festival and there's a lot of content now on our Vimeo page um, and we have um, afternoon tea sessions where we're talking to script writers but also authors there are some professional development sessions on there as well and they are generally free to members and non-members so do follow up on those um i mean i can send around a link uh, vimeo soa and vimeo um yes and i mean we support authors financially we've been running a, a a sort of um contingency funding campaign throughout the course of this year we've been able to get funding from amazon um some of the big industry players uh, in publishing um supporting those and that all that funding is available to non-members and members alike um but yes and a lot of what we do is signposting so we'll be we have um you know communications a communications manager who'll be signposting to all these kind of initiatives and opportunities um but generally actually as you said the bbc writers room is still the kind of go-to resource on this i think yeah. and that john woods book into the woods is great thoroughly recommend it whatever, whatever you're writing i think it, whether you're writing um screen right for, for the screen or if you're writing a novel or um or theater or whatever it's it's really really good book yeah breaking down the, the whatever what story is um fantastic i was just going to quickly catch up there's a couple of the quite a few uh, questions in the chat that's just going to address fast now do we look at original scripts for writing samples we, we're looking for for our awards we are looking for original scripts yeah software we've talked about um a Hollyoaks script template? No, we don't. We don't need a template specifically for Hollyoaks. If you're entering the Hollyoaks award, in fact, don't worry about that at all. Don't get hung up on that. Hey, Jay, I think. No, no, definitely not. Really, don't worry about that. The thing that they're looking for more than anything else is is a dialogue, um, and I mean, it depends what you're going to be asked to write. In the later stages, you might be asked to write an actual Hollyoaks script, but for your entry don't do Hollyoaks characters, do an actual original script that actually shows um, your voice. It doesn't even have to be something uh, similar to what Hollyoaks actually is. Um, you know, my, my advice would be to write, if you're new to write and write about something that you, you know about. Um, mm -hmm. so, in, so for me, my, my first script was, was about my family um, and my experiences as a, as a school teacher. Um, and that that was my first script. And it was about thinking, I think, not just what might work for you or what is about you, but about what might appeal to other people. And I think that's one of the things that we all need to think about in terms of writing, that it isn't just about you. It's about what other people can can get from your writing. Otherwise, it would just be a diary. So mm -hmm. it's that thing of like not being overindulgent, I think, when, when you're writing. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but I think it's that sort of idea of what can other people gain from reading or watching, watching your stuff. So it can be personal to you. It can be about you, but it's got to be something that other people can connect with. Um, 
So my first script was called George and the Indian Family, which was kind of based on me being a, a school teacher, me having an Indian family and me going out with a white guy. So that was the funny stuff about it. But it's not going to be something that just appeals to people who fall into that category, if that makes sense. It's got to be like it can appeal to all families or, you know, it can speak it can speak to a lot of people. So I think that's important. I think the other thing is um, trying to sort of connect, um, as Tabor said, with other groups. Um, I used to go to a, a writing group where we'd we'd all bring a script in, five pages of script, everybody would read it together and everybody would just go, that's crap, that's great, and give you feedback. Um, and that really worked. But again, it was about not being sort of precious or overly precious about your words and being able to sort of go, right, okay, so that didn't land. That means that's not right, rather than just sticking with it, you know, not wanting to get rid of your words. So I'd, I'd strongly recommend being able to be with other people. I think sometimes writing seems like an occupation that's good for people who like being by themselves. Um, but I, I think it's really, really important to be able to connect with other people, being able to take advice from other people, and very importantly, being able to take uh, constructive criticism. Um, about the book thing, the one that I would recommend is um, Save the Cat. So it's a bit of like a cheap and dirty one in some ways in comparison to Into the Woods. But if you're struggling with structure, because that was the one thing I really stru struggled with was structure, um, Save the Cat really does take you through the different stages of what should be happening when. It's quite prescriptive, but it's good. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for that. One, one person who was previously shortlisted had asked if... Um, they should send in a, 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 something from a new script or uh, a different sample from a previously submitted script. And I, I suppose that you've kind of answered that, Jay, in a way. I, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, I would, I would yeah. agree with that. Yeah, go with, go with something new. I was also going to say for the, these awards are the only awards that we also do interviews as well. So we, we shortlist down to about six for each award. Uh, and then we, we have final interviews because you're going to be working with the production companies so closely, we, we have that process in place so that the production companies get to meet everybody. Um, definitely, if you've been shortlisted, though, please do apply again. Um, and there are examples of people who were shortlisted in the past who reapplied and, and went on to win all across our awards, actually. Um, we're going to continue. I was going to say as well about if there's any links or anything in the chat, please try and, if you're out in the audience, please try and, uh, you know, extract those links now from, from the chat because at the end of the session, it all sort of disappears. So I was gonna ask a bit about uh, when you submit work and uh, Kate, I was gonna ask you this one first. So what, what would make a script stand out for you amongst other ideas? I think, I mean, hopefully this doesn't sound too generic, but I think the kind of first thing you look for is sort of a sense of the writer's voice and actually much more so than the idea itself, um, which is, I think, something that new writers have to learn, just because quite it's really unlikely for your first TV idea to get picked up. Um, so when you're reading a script, you're trying to get an understanding of the sensibility of the writer and what they're interested in, and, and also whether you're entertained or not. Um, but... And I think like what Jay was saying about dialogue is really sort of true. It's just like feeling that someone knows these characters and feeling that you want to spend time with those characters. That's the kind of thing that makes the script stand out. Um, and also just being quite bold with it. I think you shouldn't try and write something that you think a TV producer will like. I think sometimes you can see those scripts and they're not necessarily the ones that stand out. Um, so yeah, I think sort of begin with character and begin with dialogue. I think structure is something that you have to learn and, but you can't teach voice if that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that makes absolute sense. And someone in, in the chat actually had asked, what, um, what do you think was spotted in Tyber's script that made it so appealing? And I think Kate's kind of answered that actually. And Tara, I don't want to embarrass you, but it was it was that the 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 voice was so authentic, 
and um, so distinct and it, so lively and inventive. Um, the work just felt felt real, and it it was it was um, full of energy and just really really well written. The dialogue just kind of flew off the page, um, but it was all about the voice. Yeah, it wasn't about technicalities of of putting the script together really. Um, and I, I remember it really clearly, actually, um, discussing mm. it with the, with the panel at the time and how excited everyone was by it. Um, so, um, yeah. And there's another, someone else had asked whether they should be thinking about writing about the pandemic at the moment. I don't know whether TV uh, production companies are looking for writing about the pandemic, but has it come up in Hollyoaks, Jay? Um they just can't kiss or fight. So that's basically Hollyoaks is done if we can't do <laughs> um, I think the feeling was we have to kind of mention it in passing, but let's not go on and on and on about it because people actually want, want a break from the pandemic. I think you the rule of for, for your script now is basically write about what you care about, write about what you're passionate about. If you've got something to do with the pandemic that is interesting or a different voice or whatever, then that's fine. But don't go for that, the hot topic sort of idea of like, you know, what's in at the moment? Is it historical? Is it this? Is it that? I think it's about you um, as to, you know, what your voice is and developing your voice, but what about that would be interesting to other people? So it isn't really thinking like, oh, this is in the news, you know, I'll, I'll do a version of that. It's, it's got to sort of come from here as, as well as there, I think. Like finding perspective on something that, that hasn't been told, the story that hasn't been told in that, in that way. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, it's, it's fine to actually write about something that's topical, but only if you're going to provide your own kind of like unique perspective, um, unique point of view. It's not about like, it kind of contradicts what I, what I was saying before in some ways, but it's not about thinking about what the producer wants to hear. It's about writing about something that you know, but equally something that will appeal, that people can draw draw something from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'd also say um, that, oh, just a, I'd also say that it's not, TV drama, even sort of things that have a really quick turnaround like Hollyoaks, it's not kind of an instant response to things. So actually re like responding to headlines by the time you've written it and it's filmed and it goes out, you might look at things that are happening to you right now very differently. And I think that's the kind of, like the pandemic is an interesting example because we're all living through it and we don't know how we're gonna feel about it in six months or two years. So that it's, and I think TV drama works better when it's, responding to things that you've kind of lived through and thunk about or, and sort of settled. That's really interesting, yeah. It's a really, it's a really good point, actually. Um, and I guess that's something that, that you have to consider, don't you, when you're writing something? You've got you to have that in your mind a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Okay, f fantastic. Um, Theo, I wanted to ask you quickly, um, just if you have any thoughts, somebody asked about whether you have any advice for, what, for, for anyone who is thinking about what they should be expecting to get in payment for their work, where they can find any information about that. Um, so there are a number of framework deals negotiated with the unions and the broadcasters. Um, so we don't, for TV, we don't negotiate um, the majority of those so there's B, the bbc deal which is negotiated with the writers guild um there's one with itv and one with channel four and there's also a deal with um pact the trade association for independent producers um uh, for their members and members of the writers guild so those are the framework agreements that we will be looking at when we're advising on your paperwork but there's an awful lot in there there's an awful lot of opportunity in the scope for producers and writers to be contracting. And those are the, um, you know, outside of the framework of those deals. So, you know, those are, the, those are the kind of agreements that we'll be looking at on a daily basis that will come through to us. And we'll be advising on ter headline terms of the deals and also any kind of legal risk and red flags. Uh, we'll be talking about softeners, sweeteners, clarifiers, all this kind of thing. The, 
that's sort of part of the course for contract negotiation. So it's pretty technical stuff, isn't it? Some of it. Yeah, I mean, we do we do what we can to break it down, and we'll offer written and you know a phone call, follow up phone call, just to kind of help kind of break down these quite complicated technical points to make yeah. it easier. Yeah. But you know what, if you're, you know, if you are entering into these kind of agreements, um, they can run on for pages and pages and it's in it within everyone's interest to get a deal that's works for, you know, both parties from the outset. So it is worthwhile sending those through to us. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and actually, we've we've just had a question in the chat, which I know we're talking about TV writing today, but the, the, we have had a question about radio drama and uh, yeah. you're particularly interested in radio, Theo. So one of you you do just give a little bit of advice for anyone who's interested in looking for opportunities for radio? Well, um, I mean, we were saddened to see mid middle of last year, the BBC actually cut their linear scheduling. Um, so actually the opportunities for linear radio with the BBC are fewer than they were before. Um, and that's something that we're actually working on. Well, we're actually seeing what we can do with the BBC in, in, in terms of sort of making sure that those kind of opportunities are not sort of um, lost any to any further degree. Um, but yeah, there are interesting opportunities opening up on BBC Sounds. The problem for writers is that a lot of the times, a lot of the time you will need to connect with a, um, a producer who has already a sort of supplier agreement in place with BBC. So, but you know what, I mean, you know, the easiest place to look for those guys um, is literally in a, in a copy of the Radio Times and look at the producers that are actually had their work commissioned on the BBC, recent commissions, successful commissioned commissions. You'll, they'll almost always have a website. You can, you know, you can go on there and see if they've set anything out about unsolicited submissions. And if they haven't, or if they're accepting submissions, you can make an approach and, and sort of make some kind of connection to them. Um, but there are a lot of... Um, sort of self producers out there now that are putting out their um, well podcasts, I suppose they'll be called onto sort of the indie platforms. Um, and it was really encouraging. We have an, an award for audio drama that closed for entries in October. We'll be running it again next year. Um, and we had threefold the number of entries that we've ever had before. Ma huge majority were not BBC dramas. They were dramas that we've been putting up on things like SoundCloud um, and all these various different platforms that were being self-produced um, by communities of writers, collaborators, producers. Um, and yeah, it was really exciting. And, you know, we support initiatives such as Film the House, which is a, I'm sure you will have heard about this. It's an initiative for young filmmakers makers and script writers to um, uh, sort of put their work in front of their local MP. The MP then nominates um, scripts to go forward to a central judging process. And then the winners are awarded um, at the Houses of Parliament. And the next, the current edition will be closing for entries in July. So that's well worth, worth looking out. Those kind of opportunities are the sorts that we'll be trying to um, uh, signpost towards as well and support. Thanks for that. Yeah, I was, just, I was wondering if anyone else had any anything to share about radio drama? Um, I I did one, but I think um, it is that thing of getting a, a producer to champion you, really. Um, I did some work with Sharon Sefton, and yeah. we're like, she's, she's spoken uh, with us before. Um, it is a different genre, and it is something that is really, really useful in terms of your writing. For this, personally, I would go for a television script, not, not a radio script. Um, I think it's a different skill. Um, but if you've got a radio script, you can adapt it to make it into a television script. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't go for something that is actually a radio script. I just saw the, the question, can we submit a, a radio script? But I would think that it should be for television because it's a television award. It's a different medium, isn't it? I mean, a, a radio yeah. script can display your writing talent, I think. But, but yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, to make, try and make it as specific to, to the thing. Yeah, you're absolutely, about. absolutely. Yeah, okay. So I had a few questions actually from people who seem to be quite fearful of, uh, of having to pitch their work. And I don't know if anyone wants to sort of pick this up and explain that actually it's not that scary and be really no. sure about it. Um, uh. Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, whoever, you know, the, the next winner of, of, a, 
the Hollyoaks competitions might be sitting here with us now. Um, and one of the most intimidating things is when you go for your first story conference um, and there's 30 people around the room um, and you're really worried about pitching in front of them in case you make a real show of yourself and all of that kind of stuff. And you don't want to come across as uh, too shy, but you also don't want to come across like you know everything. So it's just having your normal people skills, I think, of, you know, always go for the middle path. Um, and just if you're pitching an idea which, you know, is close to you, is something that you feel reasonably confident about, then it's fine. All these sort of like horror stories about um, conference rooms and all that kind of stuff. I can't speak for Coronation Street or EastEnders or any of those, but I can speak for Hollyoaks. And they are literally the nicest people in the world that you'd ever, ever want to come across. So if you end up with Hollyoaks, you'll be fine. As I say, I can't speak for other, other soaps. Um, Okay. I think it's like any workplace, I guess, <laughs> you know, you've got good, bad and ugly everywhere. But as long as you feel comfortable with your own art and your own ability, then it's all good. The high pressure in terms of the schedule, aren't they? And the, the... Of course. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Tybe, have you done much, had to pitch much? Oh, yeah, actually. So um, uh, about three, four months ago, I was selected to join a very small writer's room for um, uh, a company called Sister Pictures who are developing uh, a series uh, for BBC drama and um, so I'd not done anything like this before and wasn't sure what to expect uh, was really nervous about it because when you've not you know like Jason you know you're pitching ideas but it's quite a, a relatively small way to do and everyone's so supportive I think that's the biggest thing knowing that you know um, I'm new and kind of not done this before but it's about sharing ideas and so you know people are quite welcoming and, and we'll pitch them with what about this and what about this so it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be but I was initially I had you know kind of lots of different thoughts about how it might how it might go and you know if I, my ideas would be good enough but generally people make you feel comfortable so I've, I've been very fortunate in that sense the production been company have been really um, supportive and and the writers as well and quite encouraging to kind of you know what what are your thoughts on this what do you think you know to kind of bring you in if you're if you're not feeling too confident so um yeah from my my own experience so it, it's it's been brilliant and not as scary as I thought it was going to be so yeah I'd say it's just often people would just want to hear what what your thoughts are on things so uh, and the more you do I think you probably Joe will probably tell you probably become a bit more confident in in doing it really yeah, and I think, I think as well, it doesn't always have to be that big, massive boardroom that you're pitching actually mm. happens in. So with my original stuff, the pitching has been done via Zoom with one other person um, and it's really easy and it's just a question of somebody saying, right, I would like you to write something uh, for kids, give me some ideas, and then you write some ideas down. So one, one of those has actually been taken uh, by the BBC now. So I've got a series with the BBC, which I forgot to tell you, Will. Um, so, I mean, that's quite nice to be able to do your own sort of um, series for kids. Um, and I'll be able to have my own writer's room, which I'm excited about. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so that's, that's nice. Um, but again, the pitching for that was really, really low-key. Um, just with one other person, just talking through some ideas. Um, and then it was just done in a really gentle way. And it was just me going, oh, one time this happened in school and it was dead funny, blah, blah, blah. And that was it, really. And then, you know, got to the stage of, of, of writing a treatment. I've just written the first episode and that's gone, gone through to them now. So it's just, you know, things can happen through osmosis. I think opportunities can come knocking when you don't realise Um it's just being open to, to different things, I think. Um, and, you know, initially not saying no to things. So now I'm, I'm like, the, the best thing ever is like I'm a full-time writer, which is something that I never thought would, would ever happen. So it's quite nice handing my resignation in a few months ago. That was exciting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's really exciting stuff. Um, and Kate, do people pitch to you? Yeah, well, I think, the weird thing is sort of everyone is always pitching like whoever they are so right. from so writers are pitching ideas and also when you're kind of sort of beating out a story with a writer you're everyone in that room is pitching ideas whether they're the writer or the script editor or the producer and they will then have to pitch that up to 
the executive producer or the head of the channel and so it's kind of like everyone does it and you just get used to kind of throwing an idea out there and I think the thing is you will you will pitch a shit idea at some point and that's fine <laughs> and I think that's the thing kind of just getting really comfortable and relaxed about throwing ideas out there and seeing which one kind of connects with people but it, I think it's more informal than um people think maybe it does like, seem that way yeah that it's yeah not such a kind of structured intimidating thing where you're you, you know everyone's looking at you and you've got a you know you two and a half minutes to mm. yeah your, that's not a, like a powerpoint you know, info yeah. or anything um and also i think for original ideas quite often the way to think about it is like if you had seen a really good tv show and you were telling a friend about it that's kind of how you pitch it you'd be like i saw this great thing it's about this person who xyz it's, it's kind of that kind you want that excitement um when you tell someone about your idea yeah yeah it's true i think it's about um being able to do it quite quickly i think there's you know in a lot of script writing books they talk about the idea of the pitch that can be delivered in a lift so if you were in a lift with a producer going from the first floor to the 12th how could you get across within that time what it is that you're writing you, you want to write about so it, it's about being succinct, I think, as well, um, and not feeling like you, you have to talk for half an hour because, you know, it's too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a hard thing to do, isn't it, to get something that you've spent so much time on and put so much love into, into something as concise as, a, as you know, the two minutes or whatever you'd be in a, in a lift, I guess. But it's important to be able to do that, isn't it, and to have that, have, have that thing that you can, that you can, bring out whenever you need it, I suppose. And talk very succinctly about, about your work. You've got, I think you've got to just practice it, you know, so it's just getting it down, getting it down a bit like when you have to come up with like a, a log line or just a, a couple of sentences to describe the story. It, I think it must have taken, it's taken I, for the one that I'm, I've just um, submitted to for the BBC, I've had pages and pages and pages of, of different ideas before I got to the one that I went, that's the one that I'm going to go with. So it does take a bit of practice. Um, and the more you do it, the easier it does, it does get easier. You'll, you'll find instinctively, you'll start to edit down um, and to make it as short as possible. Um, yeah. How are you doing it? <laughs> yeah, well, we're running out of time, but we've got a few questions in the chat. If I could just go back to them. There's one here. Someone asking if you were successful with the award, how your how you would kind of work that out with your employer, um, whether your employer would want you to work part time. And I guess it is something with this particular award is it is a big commitment. Uh, and I don't know, Jay and Tyler, do you want to say? It's fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. Don't worry about the work thing. Basically, um, you you can. I mean, it depends. I'm sort of rewriting the program with Hollyoaks as we speak. Uh, just in terms of my experiences and everything else. But um, you can work full time and be in receipt of this reward and, and doing it because they know that people work. <laughs> and I was like working full time as a teacher, three kids, useless husband, all of that kind of stuff. But I managed to do it. So I think it's a, as long as you can get a few days off to go to conferences and things like that, if your work can be a little bit flexible in that kind of way with your normal leave, if you kind of say this period of time is good for me, then you you, you can do it. So I, I don't worry about work and all of that kind of stuff. You can do it. We'll, Hollyoaks, or we'll help you find a way to make sure that you can do all the things that you need to do. So don't worry about that. Yeah, great. Thank you. And Tyree, and we are, I would say that we are definitely flexible as well. We we, we can work the program out around you. How do you yeah. find that, Because you've with your commitments yeah so i work practically full time i work 32 hours a week i've been doing it um for 20 odd years and i still work so all of the writing stuff and everything that i've done is on on top of that but um yeah if you i, I tend to work you know evenings uh, weekends i've got two young children as well so it's trying to juggle everything and um I take leave so odd days or afternoons like for the bbc we've taken just a bit of time out just a couple of hours to attend the sessions and things like that and just working it working it around that so um, yeah, I'm still working pretty much full time. Great, thank you. Um, another question for someone who uh, who got to the interview stage was shortlisted 
but wasn't successful. Yeah, I think that you're being too hard on yourself, actually, that to have got that far was pretty brilliant because it's incredibly competitive. We get so many brilliant submissions. And I would just say that if you're doing it again, just, just apply again. Don't be held back by that. And just do do your best with your submission. And and really with the interview, Kate, I guess it's it's just a matter then of, of explaining what you're trying to, to do with your work a bit, isn't it? And how the placement will be will work for you. Yeah, and I think everyone who gets to interview stage is really, really good. Um, I think that's important to remember. There's not necessarily something that you did wrong, which meant that you didn't get any further. That's definitely not kind of how it works, really. Um, I mean, I think there's no like kind of formula for a successful interview. Um, I think always coming with kind of being able to talk about yourself and also I guess being able to talk about TV as well is also really helpful like what TV is on right now and what TV shows are your kind of all-time favorites that all of that stuff is really good to come with but uh, yeah I wouldn't be too hard on yourself for it, it's basically it's kind of impossible to sort of fail out of this interview if that makes sense yeah um, I and I think also through the interview, you're, you're also making contact with people in the industry. And it's also a chance to, to have, you know, have a conversation with people within the world that you, you're looking to work within. Mm. Uh, it's, you know, that's, I know that's not much compensation if, if you don't actually get the thing that you're going for, but it, it, but it is part of it, you know, and it is always worth trying again. Theo, do you, because you have a lot of people applying for things, don't you? And um, would you say the same that go back, apply again for something, keep going with it? Yeah, absolutely. It's so, so hard um, dealing with rejection. Um, absolutely. And and actually, one of the things I think we surveyed writers the year before last, I think, and we asked them what they found most important at, in terms of the support for, them, for themselves as writers. And actually, this kind of this kind of community sense of community and sense of support that there are people out there in the same boat as you are and uh, the sense that you're kind of all working together and understand where each other are coming from was was the top actually that came above any kind of financial support um, that writers were looking for um, so we try and help with that as well we try and um, and we've got special interest groups we've got lots of writer community groups popping up all over the place I'm not exactly sure whether we what we've got in West Yorkshire um, as you're saying before but yeah I mean this whole sense of just connecting with people and, and um, just appreciating that a lot of people are going through exactly the same things that you are and, and not to be knocked too hard by rejections that come through because it is the map path of the course, unfortunately. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, we, we've got a little bit of time, not much, but I was gonna ask each of you one by one to maybe give one piece of advice on anyone who's who's kind of at this stage in their in their writing life of beginning to kind of put a script together and they're thinking about sending it out to someone um and i thought maybe just start just in the way that i can see you so i can see kate over that side oh one piece of advice i think don't be scared <laughs> and um also, I think, I guess the most important thing for new writers is to keep going and keep generating ideas. And if one doesn't work, go on to the next one. And if you don't get, if you don't win this award, there's so many more out there. Um, so I think, yeah, resilience and lack of fear. Courage, that's the one, <laughs> is the one piece of advice. That's a great advice, courage, yeah. And uh, Theo, I can see you next. Um, I mean, I have to say for contracts perspective, don't rush into any kind of contractual stuff that's offered to you that sort of appears, you know, and there's a lot of collaboration going on at the moment. There are a lot of writers collaborating together. There are a lot of writers collaborating with, maybe not in the TV space, but definitely in the audio drama space with self-producers. So people that are setting themselves up as a, as a, as a product producer. Um, you know, the film, film the house initiative I spoke about that a lot of those are sort of, you know, um, emerging producers, amateur producers and amateur writers 
they're not quite sure what you know what's going on in terms of the rights ownership of copyright you know how um the split in remuneration and these things can get successful very very quickly so it is so important just to make sure that if you are entering into any kind of agreement and just bear in mind that agreements can be verbal as well as written um just make sure that you're comfortable with what you're signing and if in doubt just seek this the advice of one of the unions such as the soa or the writers guild brilliant yeah always always look for those support bodies um yeah. who are, uh, whose work is kind of dedicated to, to 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 doing this to being there for writers and advising you thank you um tyler um one piece of advice um i'd say oh re Drafting, redrafting, as in going, going over it. You know, check, check before sending anything out there. I think I spent like two solid weeks on my just them ten pages for uh, the Northern Writers Award, and like every single day, just till the early hours. It's ridiculous. Not that I recommend that to, to anybody else, but just kept going over it and over it and over it and over it until I was happy with it. I, I could have applied the year before actually. Um, I was encouraged to apply the year before, but I didn't feel ready. I thought I don't I'm not happy I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'll, I'll see and I'm still learning then so I waited and for me personally I'm, I'm glad I waited obviously but um I would say yeah just keep going until you until you're happy with it and when you are and get somebody else to check it as well get other people to check it really out loud um uh before before um, um submitting it and sending and sending it on and you've got like two months yet still so there's lots and lots of time to like draft and redraft don't leave the last minute yeah yeah don't leave it too late but but yeah but um do your bit but that is such good advice about waiting for the time to be right actually uh, always do that and if it doesn't feel right remember that it will come back again uh, yeah. next year and other opportunities will also come around again and jay are you still there You've, jay might have she cut off we might have lost her. i think we i can see a box but she's not in it so i um I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, I think Jay might have uh, been cut off or something. So I, I think we're out of time actually. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you to, to Jay and to Tyber, uh, Kate and Theo for giving us so much advice and um, being so open and generous with, your, with your, um, your thoughts as well. And I think that, you know, for the audience, I hope you've come away with, with some new pieces of information that'll be useful for you and maybe some um, inspiration as well. Uh, I wanted to say happy Christmas to everybody as well coming up soon and just warm wishes for, for 2021. Uh, you know, I'm personally not gonna miss 2020 much, but I, you know, really hopeful about, about next year. Um, and thanks so much and, and so good to see all of our panelists. And so um, great to see so many active uh, lively comments popping up in the chat as well. You've, you've really, every, all the audience, you've really brought a huge amount to the process with, with such, uh, such good questions, basically. Um, so thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs>